the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed in our life through the grace mercy of our lord if it was not this matchless grace in day by day that we are enjoying we wouldn't have been really the true products of christ where we can think we can sustain in our own human energy the own human ability the power that you can think you can get when you keep your body fit through bodily exercise and since it is purely god's grace that what are we today again a new day a new grace as we believers fail to prove the worthiness of our lord in a day by day walk the true walk which we need to in the light of the knowledge of bible doctrine alone being misplaced and not understood properly have caused several misapprehensions of the truth that this man have really lost to understand the importance of rightly dividing the word of truth and since this man was standing in the pulpit have failed to rightly divide the word of the lord you and i as a believer in the lord and savior jesus christ have to note that we are no longer under the popery of roman catholicism because we have been come out by taking into considering the exact reality of the world by the one who had been our father martin luther followed by john calvin and zwingli who have taken to the point of realization to the truth that if it was not that if it was not bible doctrine then there would be no need to protest against the teachings of this popery a great quote which many people might have forgotten to think on what basis this protestantism has been formed on what reality that we are kneeling today upon our knees to tell the world that it has to be bible doctrine number one priority in our soul and the truly dividing or rightly dividing the word of the lord which demands a faithful preparation of bible doctrine because if it is not bible doctrine a day by day process that you and i have to take then there can be nothing in this world that you can think it is necessary for you in the day by day renovation of lord's grace upon us how unfaithful we are you may never know it until unless you come to the point of realization how faithful is my lord the only problem with us that we are searching for freedom which is no freedom at all we are trying to enjoy to establish the best standards of understanding of our mind which has no meaning at all 
And why is it so? Because we don't have the real freedom in us. Your different constitutions in the countries may have different rights of freedom. But Bible doctrine talks about the freedom that could be set free for you is to the, learn the doctrine that has been given in our hands. That freedom which no one can buy, that freedom which no one can give, that freedom which no one can tell, the freedom wherewith you have already been told to stand free, the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the right past a teacher who is a male believer alone, faithfully being prepared dispensationally through his concept, can deliver you to you the word, the knowledge of Christ, the mind of Christ, and in return give to you the true freedom, the true freedom of John 8.32, where many people fail to realize it. You shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. Until and unless you rightly divide the word of the Lord, how can you develop doctrine, dear brethren? Until and unless you understand the things that are pardoning around, that are going around in the popery, the Roman Catholicism trends. Whenever we meet a Roman Catholic guy, he's been absolutely shocked to know that the Bible has two testaments combined together, the old and the new. He says, does the Bible have both together? And that's the great darkness what they can have in their mind. Why is it so? Because their property doesn't want them to know the truth. As such, Satan doesn't want the people to learn the truth. Allure them, illusion, and induce them to be obscure from the right Bible doctrine. And tell them to follow some rituals. Make them to understand the things which are absolutely dead. Or dead rituals. Some refined rituals are the things what we are able to look today of Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, once again being laid down in the churches. This is what we can learn in the Protestant pulpits. We can call it as a reformed rituals. But on one end, the rituals, what these people that are taking around, being taken care of, by the Roman Catholicism, is that the, the congregation, when they're attending the church, they do not even know that the Bible has two testaments combined together. And they say they are Christians again. To what extent we can count them? Is it not purely the darkness in the soul which they think they can grow up without the knowledge of Bible doctrine, what the Pope teaches to them, what the Bishop teaches to them, that is enough? In fact, even when they read a passage in the in their sermons, they don't want to read it completely and correctly to the context. Half here, half there, half as others. No contentment. No contentment to read the real word of the Lord as it is. And what led Martin Luther to fight back? To develop them on the gift of the scriptures. Bible doctrine. The completion of canon in the first century, A.D. 96, was a true source for us to note that the Bible has been written long back before we can fight in the 15th century of 1551 or 1530, the Reformation movement, the Protestantisms. And the founding father who has founded it, Martin Luther, had a code to tell for us where many people might have not come through their entire life. An entire life which they will never know if they have not been interested to know the truth. Because Moses, if he would have failed to look upon the burning bush where it has not been consumed, he would have not been chosen to be called. Even you, if you fail to desire the truth, you will be fail to be chosen for Christ. And if you fail to look upon doctrine, and you look upon rather than doctrine into the dreams, visions, 
and to the pertaining things sent out, and to tell that I have the power of doing miracles or healings or speaking in tongues. I have been given this sign, I have been given that sign, and if you want to follow those things, do you know what, dear brethren? You are walking exactly to the standards of popery. That popery obscured you from the truth. But right now when you are into the Bible doctrine era, which has been given for us from the 15th century, you have absolutely failed to look. As such, they are going to fail to look upon doctrine. It has become very much essential for us to note that this so-called fake pastors they do not even know that they are pastors, but they want to tell to the highest rank that they are apostles and they are prophets. Cheating the people, deceiving them with their lies, promising to give deliverance to tell. As per the posture, mental attitude can work through psychosis and neurosis. And tell that I have seen a vision that God is going to deliver you. Lord has told me to anoint you to become the CM of the country, the PM of the country. And making people to absolutely be in darkness, telling that they will give the deliverance. Deliverance, if it is not been bought from doctrine, from the mind of Christ, when you change your thinking. Then where is the true deliverance for you, dear brethren? Take it granted, there can be no deliverance at all. And they are really a bunch, and there are so many morons who want to have deliverance without the knowledge of Christ. And why is it so? No desire for truth, no love for God, that's why. People are no longer interested to love the truth as it is. Because they are not interested to learn the truth as it is. Because they don't have time. And that's what we can understand to realize, dear brethren, it takes time. The man who would truly love, want to know and love the Lord must give time to him. Time to meditate, time to like, time to think. The daily inculcation of process. It's absolutely the time that has been required. The Roman Catholic people fail. What for? They failed because they couldn't understand the reality of doctrine. Protestantism came around and gave each and every believer Bible in their own hands. If there are no enough pastor teachers to train them up properly, depending upon the desire, as we can find in the book of Malachi, my messenger, we find one of the messengers as a priest in Malachi 2, 7. And then our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then John the Baptist. And what will the lips of a priest will possess? Knowledge. People should go there to learn the knowledge. Malachi 2, 7. That's why he's been called as my messenger. And that meant to say, if you're a messenger of the Lord and if you want to be a pastor, teacher in the pulpit, the permanent spiritual gift, not with apostles or prophets, it has to be a gift of communication alone. And it cannot lead to further things. It has to be communicating, communicating, communicating gift. Greater our failure to understand the simple truths have led so many people into error. The errors which they are not able to get out, which they are not able to come out, still obscuring, still blinding, still looking upon the useless and worthless things. Fakery of deliverance, fakery of XYZ trends, fakery of this trend, that trend. And promising, which they themselves do not know, if it has not been met in the true righteousness of God, they can never attain the reality of the word. Never they can attain. And what is happening in our pulpits today? Exact antithesis of popery has been happening today. They at least had their teachings to lay down simply and rust. Because they do not even know the importance of doctrine. That's why a man who is from a Roman Catholic background doesn't even know that the Bible can consist of both covenants together. The Old and the New Testament together. The same popper is happening again today in this Protestantism as well. Believers do not know what they are in Christ today. Believers do not know what is the rightly dividing the word of the Lord. Believers do not understand the purpose of rightly dividing the word of truth. And why they are, what they are. No, they are not at all interested. And that is what it is happening today in our churches. 
and they are easily following those things which could be easier for them to sit and study, which could be easier for them to look and think, to wait and to watch and to consider the fakery of the talk. As if a man prays to them so that he can become a prophet. As if a man tells to them he can become an apostle. Because they want to look upon the pre-canon period, still not the post-canon period. And they want to tell no pastors, no evangelists, because it is a tough job. As if the gift, communicational one, has been there in their hands, they want to go and tell. And like that in the Protestantism today, they are ample to the core, who are being deluded in their visions and dreams. But do you know what Martin Luther quoted? He said, I have covenanted with my Lord, that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that my Lord, that is he, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, should not send visions or dreams or even angels. And he said, I am content with this gift, the gift of what marvelously miracled out the matchless gift of the completed canon of Scripture, the knowledge of Christ, Bible doctrine. So, I am content with this gift of Bible doctrine of the scriptures, which teaches and supplies all that is necessary, both for this life and that which is to come. End quote. If Bible doctrine alone is enough, then why do you want to go for your miracles, healings, visions, dreams, and wrongly divide the word of the Lord and cheat the people? who are your own fellow brethren. If you have at least any consideration for you to look, you need to be very much cautious enough to understand that you are cheating the real people of Christ. It's not a great pain for us to tell to you this again and again. When you will change, your father might have been dead. He would have come back and told to you, he would have told you the importance of Bible doctrine. Since he led in the same path, you are also following in the same path. And you call yourself as a man of God, working out and trying to tell the people, I have the power to heal you. I have the power to deliver you. I have the power to do this. Morons will listen to you. Our innocent believers will listen to you. That's why we need to be not like to and fro tossed out with the, with the slight of every doctrine, said Ephesians 4.24 or Ephesians 4.17 and odd. We need to be thoroughly prepared. We need to come to Hebrews 5.14 to discern what is right and what is wrong. And since you don't give time, you can never come back to look and to discern what is right and what is wrong. If there is a medicine for a particular disease, if it is very hard to get, the one who is suffering with that disease will look for that medicine. And others will not worry, though it is very hard to get, because they are not suffering with that disease, isn't it? But in today's Christian, the men, they want healing and prosperity and miracles rather than doctrine. Because they are suffering with that diseases. But they will never know. The true solution for all time is Bible doctrine. And Bible doctrine can heal you out not only to this earth, even in the world which is to come. Or the life after, or, or the life after our death in this earth. It can completely secure you. Because already you have been eternally secured. And what requires more important today in our pulpits? Men who can handle the word as it is. Men who can exegete the truth as it is. Men who can rightly divide the word of the Lord with proper isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word. With the true dispensing technique of dispensation as it is. Why? And why there aren't enough men? Because of the softies they're going to worry. The softies of this world. The softies to compromise. To look upon the prosperity gospel. To eat upon the unrighteousness things of their hearts. And to really cause them to give all fakery of the testimonies. And to tell, this brother was been accurately told by me. 
and see now this brother coming and giving you testifying for your testimony, listen to him. So that even I can get a bunch of morons again who do not love the doctrine, who will be absolutely obscured from the doctrine. Why apostasy is being rampant to the core? This is one of the reasons it is rampant to the core. People love their sickness to be covered. People love for their prosperity, peace of mind to come, rather than getting the true peace which could be bought from the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's why. Dear brethren, the great pleasure what we can have in this world is nowhere being found apart from Bible doctrine, dear brethren. The great reality of truth, the great deliverance of truth, is nowhere found apart from Bible doctrine, dear brethren. And why do you want to waste your life? It's left to you. God cannot go against your volition. The right path and the wrong path, you have to choose. But God always intends you to look upon Bible doctrine and walk in the right path. Those men who rightly divide the word of the Lord and believe their teachings rather than being justified in the sight of men, it is better to be justified in the sight of God and to stand for the truth rather than making an abomination in the sight of God because what that is pleasing to men and being justified among the men is a great abomination in Christ. And how many days more you want to fail to look upon doctrine? I know you may not watch this video, but I don't care. My duty is to deliver it out, and God knows to whom this information has to be preserved and kept. And if at all God intends to be preserved this message. Because if you have not been properly trained enough to think normally, you will never be trained enough to look what it is to be content. To be content in the knowledge of Bible doctrine more than anything else in this earth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Without rebound, without a getting back into fellowship of Lord God Almighty, it is no way possible for us to understand the true mind of Christ. And as long as we fail to understand the true mind of Christ, so long you will be into delusions and illusions, obscuring from the truth. Your delusions and illusions caused by the psychopathic condition of your mind, which could be come out as psychosis and neurosis. And there are men who follow this psychosis, a major mental illness in which there is sudden noticeable change in the personality and in which usually one sense of reality is so much confused that one cannot deal with ordinary situation. The Bible doctrine tells for us to look upon the life. And since he is out of the sense of reality, he has been absolutely confused that he cannot deal with ordinary situations. And what is neurosis? A mental disorder without known physical cause, in which there is great worry or fear for an apparent reason or uncontrol un uncontrollable urge to do a certain thing. And this meant they are neurosis and both followed by psychosis. That uncontrollable urge for money, for pleasure, for fakery, for deceiving. They are not agents of God, they are agents of Satan. Anyone who tells to you apart from the word of the Lord, he is an agent of Satan, take it granted. If he is a true pastor and if he is a true messenger of the Lord, his lips will possess knowledge, said Malachi 2.7. The five messengers mentioned in Malachi, the second one about the priest whose duty is to teach the word of the Lord. And if the pastor teacher who stands in the pulpit and if it doesn't teach to you the word of the Lord, he is no messenger of Jehovah, but rather he is an anti-messenger. He is not. He is against doctrine. Just simply quoting the verses. Prosperity verses. Bible talks about absolute assurance of faith when we believe in the Lord. And that will definitely happen to us. 
But those conditions will be followed by if. And those conditions can be fulfilled only when you satisfy the if conditions. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14 speaks about if this, if this, then you will be blessed like this. And exactly the things that we are going through is an escrow contract for time as well as for eternity. If we do not have desire for love, a desire for truth, and love for God, and absolute assurance and absolute confidence in our character of strength, so that we could be having that motivation, momentum, and perseverance. And we could look the true reality of the world. To have to be occupied with Christ and share the happiness of our Lord. Then you can never have the true happiness in you, dear brethren. No matter where you are, who you are, and what the hell you are. Men may be happy enough to think which could be pleasable for them, a temporary elevation from the suffering. But the inner man, when he suffers, when you're grieving, let get the Holy Spirit by telling lies when you suffer. You'll need to answer a tough time at the judgment seat of Christ. Better be careful for that. And if it is not for that you have been prepared, then you will have a time to answer for Lord what you have done. Know the true father of your protestant. Martin Luther, when he said, I don't require anything apart from doctrine, which can make me and supply me and make thoroughly available, not only for this life, even for the life that is to come. What else do we want to search? Do we want to look upon the things pertaining to our mental visions, mental dreams, or sent even by angels, rather than looking upon the scriptures which teach and supply all that is necessary for this life and for that which is to come. Do you want to attain over that? Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Time is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And the greater our failure to understand the simple truth will cause us to be in a state a state of absolute delusion because we have rejected the truth. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without rational life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself. We shall have eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, no matter what it is, the daily intake of the word of the Lord. And for the pastor teacher, the daily mandate is to preach the word, Kerusotom Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season. And because for the damn from my witnesses, where they have been called, it is absolutely necessary for them to note and to realize and to understand what is the importance of doctrine. The great damn from my witnesses, where they have been called. And the damn from my witnesses, where they have been called, requires the knowledge of Christ. In Valing Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And above all, we do have the damn art from my witnesses, our hearers. And if there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. Besides, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who permanently indwells in us. But have you rightly divided the word of the Lord or not? Are you still suffering for the softies? Are you still looking upon XYZ trends? And you are not here to look upon those sufferings or trends, but rather you are here to consider Bible doctrine as number one priority. And greater our failure to understand the simple dogmatical truth has led many people to become covenanted with the popery rather than Bible doctrine. Dear brother and father, over these things we shall continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was going to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will in these things and make it a source of blessing and talent. Sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.